Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's presentation. Family Matters is one of the two federally funded parent training and information centers that serves the state of Illinois. Under IDEA, every state must have at least one parent training and information center, and we serve 94 counties outside the Chicago area. So welcome today, um, for, and thank you for joining us. So please remember that Family Matters is unable to offer CEUs for training participants. Certifications of attendance can be requested by contacting the trainer via email. Family Matters is not a legal service, nor do we provide legal advice um, or representation. So any information received from Family Matters is not intended as legal advice and should not be used as a substitution for legal advice. The contents of today's PowerPoint were developed under a grant from the U.S. Department of Education. However, those con these contents do not necessarily represent the policies of the U.S. Department of Education, and you should not assume endorsement uh, by the federal government. This webinar is being recorded, and the recording will be available on the Family Matters website following the presentation. Please, at this time, use the chat box to state your name and the title or uh, your title or role in the organization you play. So, for example, if um, you're watching as a as a parent, you could state, "My name is John Doe. I am the parent. Uh, I am a, I am a parent." Okay. Um, please use the Q and A box for all questions. We will address all of these questions at the end of the presentation. Please help us by completing the brief survey that you receive that you'll receive following the presentation as well. A copy of the presentation slides um, were emailed out to you yesterday um, in the Google Drive. I have, I've also shared in the chat a link to get those in case you missed your email yesterday. So fam what is Family Matters? Well, we're first and foremost an educational he advocacy helpline. So parents, professionals, self-advocates, or students call our office daily and ask questions about their role in special education or receiving accommodations at school. Um, we also hold the state's grant for the Educational Surrogate Parent Training Program. So we train individuals in our state to become volunteers to serve students who are within the care of DCFS who have the need for special education services. Um, we are always needing volunteers for this program. We currently have over 900 students who need served in the state and only 250 so trained volunteers. So if you're interested in becoming an educational surrogate, please reach out to me and I can explain that process to you more. We also do the yearly COMPASS training. COMPASS stands for Coaching Others and Mentoring Parents About School Services. So um, it's exciting. This 2025 COMPASS season will be a virtual option that, on, as, that is self-paced um, through Google Classroom. So we're super excited about that. We do a yearly DAISY data collection program. Carrie just finished that in September. It was very successful this year. So to learn more about that program, please reach out as well. We offer several trainings quite like this one um, where we talk about self-advocacy and um, how to understand your role in special education. We are very fortunate to have two self-advocates that post monthly blogs for us. And we also, if you opened your email today, you get a quarterly newsletter too and a transition news blast. We've also started launching podcasts. So that's kind of the ways that we are serving families and professionals in the state. Family Matters employs only two full-time educational support coaches. And we um, try our best to provide you with quality presentations and individualized assistance when you need it. So today, the topic that we're going to cover is called Preparing for Parent-Teacher Conferences. So the last time we met, you met with Carrie in August um, to talk about back to school, preparing for back to school, and um, what that might look like for your student who is going back to school. It's, believe it or not, time to start, to start talking about parent-teacher conferences. Now, depending on what your school district offers, some parent teacher um, some districts offer them in the spring or I'm sorry in the fall and then again in the spring this is much different than an IEP or 504 meeting so I want to go forth with saying that every student that attends school has some sort of parent teacher conference so um, that's what we're going to be talking about going forward so, but why are they important so um, if you could put in the chat what you what your thoughts are on why parent teacher conferences are important so, but parent-teacher conferences are important because they are an opportunity to discuss your child and see how things are going, see how they're going with their teacher. I know we all operate, um, especially in the disability parenting world, that no news means good news, um, but it's great to keep that communication going with your students' educators. Um, so, parent-teacher conferences are a great way to accomplish that. And remember, it's a small meeting. It's a small informal meeting with the educators that are providing services to your student where you can talk back and forth about how things are going. 
research, research really shows that family involvement in education improves students' outcomes. So we do a whole presentation a lot of the times for professionals and how important family engagement is. So what can you expect during a parent-teacher conference? Well, during a, a, during a typical parent-teacher conference, you can expect to meet your child's teacher or teachers and review academic progress, social development, and areas of strength or areas that might need improvement thus far this year. So we're only in October. Your students have been going to school for about two and a half months now. So this is a good chance for your, the educators to come to you and say, this is what I'm seeing as an educator. And it's a good chance for you to come back and say, this is what I'm seeing as a parent. So this is a great time to talk about um, what you've seen so far in education. And it is sometimes helpful to ask for an agenda ahead of time or come with an agenda to discuss any concerns that you have so far. So if you've noticed that um, Johnny's coming home without his PE clothes, weekly and then gets a no dress the following week, this is a concern you could bring to the teacher's attention. If you're noticing that he's really struggling to get through his homework every single night, also a great time to talk about this. It's a face-to-face, -face, um, sometimes it's done virtually over a computer, but it's a time to really sit down and talk about some of your concerns. It's also important to remember that this is much different for our, for our parents that are watching that may be um, disability parents or they may be um, 504 parents, this is not a full IEP meeting, okay? There is going to be a time limit restriction on your, on your parent-teacher conference. They have a lot of people to see. They usually do them of an evening time, which increases, increases that family engagement. So they try to do it in a time when parents aren't at work and they try to do it not too close to dinner, right? So you should be getting a letter home that says, hey, it's time for parent-teacher conferences. What is your availability? This is the day we're having it. What time frame works best for you? So you're not going to have a full report of your student's IEP or 504 accommodations, but this is a great time to come in and, and talk about their education in that classroom thus far. So before the conference, gather any documents you'd like to share with the teacher. It might be an IEP, okay? So maybe this teacher um, didn't attend your last IEP meeting because it was for last school year. This is a great time to bring that with you. And it's also a great time to um, talk about a report card from last year that you saw he was struggling in this area. Because when you get to this meeting, most likely your student, uh, your teacher is going to have their report card, like their progress report thus far, you know, the little mini report cards that we get. But make a list of questions or concerns you want to address, focusing on both your child's academic progress and their social emotional de development. So it's a great time. Now, in the shared drive, I did put a couple resources, and one of them is a checklist about preparing for the um, student parent-teacher conference, so make sure you check that out. Be sure to, to ask about both your child's strengths and their areas of improvement. I love to start off with, and most teachers love to start off with the conference, something super positive about your students. So they may open up and say, you know, Abby is a great communicator. I really like how she um, talks back and forth with me about what, what she's going on. But so you could approach this as what is my child, what's my child doing well in class? What's his strength? Okay, what is he struggling with? And how can I support that child, my child's learning at home? What can I do at home that could be helpful? Should we, you know, carve out some reading time to do as a family? Should we be practicing spelling words every month, every night? Should I be taking three hours to finish a math homework problem? So, Unfortunately, like we sometimes approach the situation of I have my one student and my teacher has her 24 in my classroom. That's probably a large size, but you get where I'm going. And our concerns are in our head all the time. And we sometimes expect the teacher to be able to read our minds. But this is a great way to share those things. So keep the conversation balanced and solution focused. We're not pointing fingers like you assign too much homework and we stay up all night. You're coming here saying, I've noticed Johnny has a lot of homework. Um, I, I don't really know why that is. Is he finishing his work in class? Is he struggling? It's a great way to communicate this. So some key questions to ask. What does my child show the most interest in? Does he like reading or math? Is he more interested in STEM activities or is he just focused on recess? Our kids are telling us something here. When they show an area of interest, they're telling us something. And this is going to turn into more important things down the road when we talk about transition and doing assessments. When does the teacher notice they are becoming frustrated? How do they interact with their peers? Do they have healthy friendships? Are you seeing something that's concerning to you? Are there areas where they're excelling? Do you have concerns about any particular academic issues? 
Tell me about their ability to follow classroom rules and expectations. These are great questions to ask during this parent-teacher conference. You should also share changes in your child's personal life. Now, you are, you, your personal life is your business, but if you feel like anything at home may be impacting something that's happening at school, it's not a bad idea to share that. And I, I would like to share an example. Um, we chose as a family to place my oldest son residentially when he was 14, and we were all struggling a lot with it as a family. But I didn't realize how much that was having a carryover to my other children, his siblings' um, education at school. And um, I was able to share this at a parent-teacher conference, believe it or not. And the teacher came to me and said, I really see this, this, and this. And I, and I, I took a minute and I breathed and I said, well, we just moved his older brother to um, placement, and so our, our family dynamic has changed. And she's like, oh, my gosh, I completely understand. So this is a great time to share something about your personal life that you feel may be impacting your student's education in, in some way or really to think about that. And, again, you can be as transparent as you feel like you need to be. It's your personal life, but sometimes it's helpful to share that. Maybe some health concerns. Maybe you could say, you know, I really noticed he's had three ear infections already this year. Do you see him, like, struggling to listen in classroom? Um, concerns you might have about the social-emotional development, like you could share, he says that he doesn't play with anybody at recess. The teacher may see something different. She might say, well, I see that a lot of kids include him, but I wonder why he feels this way. Can we get to the bottom of it? And then upcoming changes that may impact um, their school day. Maybe your mom's getting a different job or they're getting a different ba babysitter. This is a great time to communicate that. And, you know, ask about the support for your child. Ask the teacher about any additional supports your child might need. Do you notice that he um, needs extra help when reading things? Are you seeing any indication that he may need evaluation for services? Is he receiving any RTI? These are great questions, or response to intervention. These are great questions to ask during this parent-teacher te conference. Keeping in mind, we only have a minimal time to meet with the teacher. So it's also a great time to start building that collaborative relationship. So establish positive collaborative relationships with your teacher by showing them you're interested and invested. This is a great way to, t um, if you haven't already shared with them your preferred method of communication, um, you know, it's a great time to ask about upcoming classroom activities that you could be involved in or that your students should be involved in. Remember the teacher and parent are partners, so you're doing this together um, and, you know, both sides working together is extremely helpful. What if there's a disagreement during the parent-teacher conference? It's not often this happens, but it does happen, and it's important to remember to remain calm and solution-focused. If a disagreement arises during the conference, Take a breath and say, well, maybe we should reschedule a longer conference to figure out, you know, how we can fix this. You're not going to be, um, you know, you're not going to be approaching this as, well, we need a comp we need, you know, more people here. I need your boss to come. It may be that you want to bring other people's minds to the table to figure out a better compromise, but ask questions to clarify the situation and how to best support the child moving forward. So you may want to say, okay, we're obviously this is a huge, a bigger issue than what we both thought. Should we schedule another time when we can come back to the table and talk about this, um, you know, to figure out a solution? So it's great especially for our students with 504 plans and IEPs to be involved in parent-teacher conferences, okay? So for older ch children, consider including them. So we're talking about 11, 12 years old. Consider bringing them to the conference because in a couple years, they're going to be going to their own IEP meeting. So this is a great way to foster that. Even if they don't stay with you the whole time, even if they're at a separate table while you're doing the conference, ask about them coming, okay? There may be times when you want to talk to the teacher privately without your student there. I completely understand that. And if you feel like the conference would go better if that was the case, it's your conference. It's you and the teacher's conference. But it's a good idea to involve your child somehow, even if they write up a short letter that you read to the teacher or, or something along those lines. It's a great way to start teaching them how to self-advocate. We can empower them to take the ownership of their learning. And if, if they will be included, they can prepare by reviewing their progress as well and seeing how this works. And don't forget, it's always a good idea to, after the conference is completed, follow up, okay? So send an email, hey, it was such a great conference we had last night. I really enjoyed talking to you about Johnny and the struggles that he's facing at school. We agreed that, you know, that going forward, this is what we would do. So 
follow up and reword those key talking points that you had during the, during the conversation. So that way you're both on the same page moving forward. Emailing the teacher and thanking them is a great way to say thank you for taking time out of your evening yesterday to meet with me and the other 20 parents that came, um, came that night. I really appreciate that. And I also like to mention sometimes why we're either waiting for the conference or leaving the conference. This is a great way to meet other parents in your child's classroom and build those relationships with them as well. I've met some great friends this way and we're still friends today. So it's a great time to really think about, you know, moving forward, where can I build those relationships? So some great resources that I'd like to share are, um, you know, the Illinois State Board of Education has some great information about family school collaboration. It has some great information on understanding your child's progress as well as understood.org and our website also has some great information about measuring progress. At this parent teacher conference, you might not hear a lot about their IEP goals. It could you could bring that up absolutely on your terms, but you they're just it's going to be a very short short meeting. As you prepare for the conference, keep in mind this might be the first time you're meeting your child's teacher. You, know, you might have met her the first day with, you know, with the busy type schedule. This might be the first time that you've met him one-on-one. -on -one. I like to bring a portfolio to the parent-teacher conference, especially when it's a brand new teacher for my student, and say, this is my son. This is what he's learning this year. This is what he's working on this year. This is what doesn't work for him. I rewrite the IEP accommodations, the 504 accommodations on this portfolio, and I share it at this parent-teacher conference. That way they have the one-page go-to resource. Now, we have a, um, a draft or a template copy of this available for sharing as well, so you can like kind of fill in the blanks. I like to put a picture of my son or my daughter on the on the portfolio to share with and that way you can um, you know share your share more about your student and they have that the go-to they've they're making um, a connection and a relationship with your child thus far you know your child in a different way and sharing you know you bringing this information to the table can be really helpful the IEP document is rather large and sometimes you know there may be something you really want to reiterate to this teacher putting on that portfolio could be helpful but be ready to discuss your child's current goals and progress, although you're not, you may not, not get those direct data reports. Now, you are by IDA have to have those data reports every time the report card comes out, but you may, you know, the teacher might not focus, you know, so much on that. You can ask, well, how is he doing with his reading goal? Like, to summarize, we're trying to improve his, his reading level by two reading levels this year. How do you feel he's doing? That's okay to do. They may not have direct data to share with you about how many times they've done this and what, you know, but just a simple conversation, do you feel like he's making progress towards those goals? Advocating for your child is essential. Use respectful, assertive communication to make sure your concerns are heard. And remember, you are your child's best advocate and your insight matters. Teachers can access resources on family engagement. Um, there's a couple here. We have a bunch on our website. Different ROEs um, bring us in periodically throughout the school year to really talk about areas of family engagement and seeing things from a parent's viewpoint. So if you're a professional watching this and you'd like more information about that, please send an email. We'd love to help promote family engagement in your classroom. <clears throat> so ways that you can get involved with Family Matters is to volunteer as an educational surrogate parent, attend educational events. You can donate to the program, participate in Fresno fundraising events, consider applying for the Board of Directors, and share information about FMPTIC in your network. We serve 94 counties in the state. However, um, FRCD, or Family Resource Center on Disabilities, serves um, McHenry Lake, Kane, DuPage, Cook, Kendall, Grundy, and Will County. That does not mean if you live in those counties you can't participate in our webinars. It just means if you need direct support about your student's um, role in special education, you would contact FRCD. Okay, at this time, I will stop the recording and we can address some questions. All right, I'm seeing some familiar names in the chat today as attendants. Oh no. Hopefully you can hear me. My Zoom is flashing that you can, you know. 